It's, it's beautiful. Better start getting used to it, my love. Happy? I need you eyes. How's the old man? Oh, Daddy will get used to it. You mean he can't stand the idea of you and me? Darling, Daddy's a general. He'd like me to marry a budding general and have lots of little generals. <laughs> but most of all, he wants me to be happy. Even with me? Oh, darling. I'm over 21. You love Romania? We've got a gorgeous hotel overlooking the Black Sea. Actually, it's one of my accounts. <laughs> you cheapskate. Well, there's a squeeze on public relations. Darling, you'll have me sozzled. That's the object of the exercise. To us. No misgivings. No second thoughts. Oh, lots of them. Well, it isn't the easiest thing for a confirmed bachelor like me. <laughs> I'll be a very understanding wife, Ma. So I can have a few dollies on the side? Mm hmm Just let me catch one of them. Oh, we've got something else to celebrate. I've just landed a new contract. Congratulate me. Congratulations. Dog food or car tires? No, yeah, it's an East German thing. Lots of money. It'll pay for ten honeymoons. East German? You really are very pretty. Idiot. I love you. This engagement is not on. Lampton Tedder. General Sir George Lampton is pleased to announce the engagement of his daughter Elizabeth Jane to Mark Tedder, son of Mr. and Mrs. Edward Tedder of Dulwich. It mustn't happen. That's a shame. And it's up to you to kill it. Uh, may we ask why, sir? The girl Lampton is a high level interpreter. Clever girl, eh? If anything, too clever. Privy to too many top-level secrets. Items of the business of no one but our people and whoever they are dealing with. Well, what's that got to do with their engagement, sir? Mark Tedder. Public relations expert and ex-journalist. Still dabbles in it a bit. Suspected of being an informer to the opposition. Certainly a lifelong sympathiser with them. Do we have anything definite on him? Well, as a PR man come journalist, he's come across one or two things we'd rather not have publicised. Somehow they got into the hands of the opposition. Could have been him. Only could have been. Now, he's been under surveillance by DI5. Oh, no. Well, if it's a DI5 job, what are we doing with their leftovers? Well, it's on, you see. The uh, fellow's a professional bachelor. Self-appointed God's gift to women, Cross. Thank you, sir. Now, all of a sudden, he's decided to marry. Well, so what? So did you once, didn't you, sir? Yes, but the girl is classified as security grade A. It's more than a coincidence that he's just landed a East German account. And she's on the NATO translators list. The DI-5 want us to muck up the marriage. Precisely. Full details of everything she heard would be in Moscow within a day. Oh, what a lovely job. You're paid. Oh, I suppose you want me to chat her up, sir. You will stay away from her, Callan. How am I supposed to do the job if I don't see the subject? Cross will take the girl. Oh, Thank you, sir. Files on both. think you're going to like this job, then? I got the girl, remember? You don't think it's just possible that he might love her? I think it's just possible he might love Moscow more. All right, come on, let's get on with it. 
Well, what do we know? Let's start with this past, shall we? Oh, yes, why not? We're bound to dig up a little bit of dirt we can shove right under her nose, I aren't we? I of his leading a life of constant and shining virtue. Are you, mate? Miss Lambton. Can I do something for you? When you finished. Well, it is nearly lunchtime. I wanted a general word with you, Miss Lambton. Oh dear. Have I done something naughty? Security isn't a joke. I'm sure it isn't. Now. It seemed to us time to remind you that your work is covered by the um, Official Secrets Act. But this carries certain obligations. I know my obligations, Mr. Robinson, and I honour them. No reminder is necessary. The security department must be kept informed of everything. And I'm sure it is. Not by you, apparently. We wouldn't, for instance, have known about your engagement had we not varied ourselves in the Times. Indeed. And this is the sort of thing we really must know. But my engagement is none of your business, Mr. Robinson. I'm afraid it is. You think it is. But really, in matters such as this, I must do as I choose. And I must tell who I choose. Do I make myself clear? Miss Lempton, we'd be grateful if you'd be so kind as to keep us informed. Would you like me to bring my fiancé in for a security check? It's a matter of keeping the files straight. You will excuse me. And Miss Lempton, we shall need to know the date of the marriage. The 28th of next month. Would you like an invitation? I like it. Mr. Cross just rang. And? He says they've both gone into her flat. Ah. What does that mean, Mr. Cannon? It means you can get on with your job, doesn't it? Listen, I'm still on bail. Only. Who got the money for the bail? Well, you did. Right. But, Mr. Now don't interrupt. All you've got to do is to go up there, break into number 208, and have a good look around, right? Mr. Cannon. Do you know what you're looking for? I'll tell you what you're looking for. You're looking for anything that a fella's fiancé might not like. You know the kind of thing I mean? Sounds so simple. It is, so why don't you just go and do it? And don't forget, signal if you find anything, all right? Go on. Do we have to go out tonight? Well, don't you want to? I'd much rather we stayed here. There's plenty in the fridge. Beth. No, really. But on my birthday? You know what I mean. I thought you might like to go out. <laughs> as long as I'm with you, I don't really care where we are. Oh, I love you.
Happy birthday, darling. <laughs> How are things at the Ministry? Oh, super, you know. Nothing new? No. Oh, yes. Yes, we had a new man in our department today. Another interpreter? No, actually, some sort of efficiency expert. Efficiency expert in an interpreter's department? <laughs> That's what the man said. <laughs> Sounds odd. Oh, darling. You know what the bureaucratic mind is. It's probably someone's bright idea we'll all forget about within a week. I suspect you're right. Oh, he doesn't get in the way much, just pokes about, you know. He's quite nice, too. Well, that's a help. He's very nice, in fact. He's quite charming. Mm. His name's Cross. I'd still much rather we stayed here. I thought you were supposed to be shy and reserved. <laughs> I am. Then why are you trying to persuade a man into spending the entire evening alone with you in your flat? Because I love him. And because I rushed to pick you up, I haven't changed yet. So, my flat first, then dinner. Mm. All right. Rich. <laughs> Been having a kip, have you? Find anything? Yeah. Letters, Mr. Cannon, letters. Blimey, you want to read some of these, don't get excited. Don't get excited. Wait a minute. Wait. Read this one first. Now, the bird that wrote that, that is terrible. That, that, that is shocking. You've got no shame. Read, read that. No, not that. Read this bit over the top first. Read, read that. You know, I really would have to buy you some deodorised soap. Just keep your distance, will you? Well, I live in just one room. You could live in the public baths. It wouldn't make any difference, would it? That's lovely. Yeah, it's just what we want. Anything else? No, no. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, it was uh, just... Um... Just uh, these, Mr. Cannon. You are a dirty old man. Well, they might come in useful, who knows? Right, let's go. job for you, break in and entering. Oh, no, please, Mr. Callan. Never mind, I... Mark Tedder? Look, I'll do it, but I have to wait for the chance. Information isn't easy to get just like that, you know. People have to be played along. Not fully yet. I'll try. Nearly ready, Beth. 
Who is that? Oh, nobody important. Are you hungry? Absolutely famished. I booked us at the Rococo. Oh. Last. Hello, darling. <laughs> Don't look so shocked, love. Aren't I going to get a kiss for your birthday? Come in, Jeanette. Come and meet my fiance. The Beth here? How nice. I didn't know you were here, Beth. Hello, Jeanette. Actually, we were just going out to dinner. Who oh, are you? How nice. Well, I won't keep you long. I just brought this for you, Mark. It's a little prezzy. How kind, Jeanette. Bless you. It's a pleasure. Happy birthday. Thank you. Well, that's new. Oh, it's you, Beth. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. Well, young lovers, have a super evening. I'm sorry we can't ask you to stay longer. Oh, that's all right. I couldn't stay anyway. I got a lover hanging about somewhere. Well, bye bye. Bo. Goodbye, Jeanette. Bye bye, Jeanette. She's a lovely girl. Do anything for a friend. I'm sure she would. <laughs> Mark. Who is it? James. Well, it's nice to see you so busy, Mr. Callan. You knocked off early, did you? Why not? We got what we wanted. Well? Letters, mate. Juicy letters. Uh, can I see them? No, you can't. You're too late. I've sent them off already. Uh, what a pity. I just feel like a nice bit of juicy reading. You've got a very funny sense of humour sometimes. It keeps me young, Mr. Callan. Is that right, Mr. Cross? We've got a couple of these, though. Should give you quite a kick. Ah, that's cosy. Yeah, it looks as though it was a very nice holiday, doesn't it? Yeah, very nice. I fancy that. Keep your mind on the job. That's exactly what I'm doing. Lovely body. Who is she? Her name's Valden. Jeanette Valden. Who knows, it might come in useful. I wonder what our Miss Lampton will look like in one of those. I do wish you'd try and be a bit more cheerful. You, um... You see Beth Lampton today, did you? Yes, I did. What's she like? Dolly, very attractive. Intelligent. You say she was a nice girl? Yes, very nice. Well, isn't that nice?
you out? Well, I don't know. It's too early to say yet, sir. Well, when do you expect to know? Well, it's hard to say. We'll have to keep watching her. We can't afford too much time, you know, Callan. Doing all we can, sir. Mm. Well, there are too many people working on this job. The I-5 followed, Tedder, Buggy's telephone, watches every move. Now we're in as well and there's still no certainty. No, well, I mean, uh, the I-5 don't claim to work miracles, do they? So why should we? Well, the job's straightforward enough. End the relationship. You appreciate, don't you, that Tedder is found to be passing information and she's his wife. We won't be able to use her to testify against yes, him. Yes, I do know the law of the land. It's damn silly. She didn't get in the way of DI-5. Oh, dear, that is a shame. Well, perhaps if we asked her very politely, she might get out of the way, sir. And what steps will you take if this action fails? Hard to say, sir. I expect we'll think of something. What exactly? Oh, for God's sake, sir, it's not our job anyway. Don't worry. It'll be something in full accord with the honourable practices of this department, sir. Hello. Oh, hello, Jeanette. Did you enjoy the birthday party? Yes, super, thanks. Jen, what about you? Oh, no, thank you. Large one for me. In such a very small world, I always think. Yes. Yes, I was surprised to find you were such a close friend of Mark's. London's not such a very large place, you know. It's quite small, really. You were close friends, I suppose, at one time. <laughs> we still are, I hope. Bless you, Angel. Have a square one. How long have you known Mark? He's nice, isn't he? Are everyone drinking? Oh, hello, darling. Mm -mm. I'm off. Must you? Ah. Deadline, sweetie. The cow of an editor, but it's a living. Look after her. Good. A whiskey, please. Got another one. You're late. I'm sorry. Traffic. Are you all right? Yes, of course I am. You don't look it. Darling. I'm sure that man's been following us. Who? That man over there. It's just a man having a drink. Well, I've seen him before. You'll have to leave that ministry. It's making you spy conscious. I tell you, it's the same man. Anyway, you've got something to tell me. Have I? Yes. Yeah, you better invest it. Only be worth half as much tomorrow. Invest that was a joke, Lonely. Ha. Oh. Yeah. What's the matter? Oh, oh, nothing. It, it's just. Well, it, you know, it's a funny old job you've got these days, isn't it, Mister Callan? I mean, you just seem to take stuff from over here and put, put it, it over, over there. there. Yeah. That bothers you, does it? Oh well, no, no, no. No, it's just it. Well, I think it's funny. Funny, funny, yeah. Yeah, you're right, mate. It's dead funny. Is everything all right at the Ministry? Yes, thank you. Our moment deals are always tricky. Is it my imagination, or have I been seeing rather a lot of Jeanette Valden lately? I don't know. She always seems to be about. <laughs> That's Jeanette for you. She seems very fond of you. Fond of me? Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's easy to see, isn't it? I, there can't be that many people she can be fond of, can there? I mean, a woman like that. A woman like what? She's kept a soft spot in her heart for you, too. Now, that is ridiculous. Is it?
Where did you get this? Does it matter? To me, yes. Never mind. I got it. Beth, I don't like this. How did it come to be taken? It's pretty intimate, isn't it? We both happened to be in Athens at the same time, that's all. We just bumped into each other. It was as innocent as that. Really? Of course. I'm sorry, Mark. But why does she sign her letters, I adore you, lover, Jeanette? Tell me. Oh, Beth. No, Donnie, don't go off the point by saying I must expect you to have had affairs before. Where did you get this photograph? I'd be an idiot to think otherwise. Why are you questioning me like this? Darling, I'll tell you why. You lied to me. That's, that's very important. Well, to me, at least. I don't know how you found this out, but it's all over. Finished. Believe me. Believe you? Mark, I've been hurt before, and I mustn't be hurt again. Not by you. That's why I didn't want to tell you. I knew you'd be upset. I know you don't like her. Oh, darling, that's got nothing to do with it. Oh, Mark, you know what I'm talking about. It's because I've been through all this before with John. Darling, it was a white lie. Oh. Are you so pure, then? I see. see. And Cross says it looks promising. That's what I just said, sir, yes. When do we get our miracle? It's so early. Oh, yes. The penalty of being an efficiency expert, you have to be efficient yourself. Oh, dear. Does that mean that I'm not? Oh, no. Your efficiency is quite up to par, I assure you. Thank you, Mr. Cross. My pleasure, Miss Lambton. You sound very bright this morning. Do I? Hmm. Perhaps it's because I'm happy. You wanted me? Oh, yes, I have some information for you. May I hear it? By all means. Since you're so determined to know all about my marriage, I have to inform you that the date has been moved forward to the 14th of this month. I do hope you can still come. You bungled it. We did the best we could, sir. And it wasn't good enough. Moving the marriage forward to next week. Well, it wasn't our fault she moved it forward, sir. Our actions seem reasonable. And you did approve of it. I would remind you, Callan, that I approve no specific action. I assume to be able to handle the job without me fussing over you like a broody hen. Oh, sir. After our wedding, the girl's next job is the NATO one. Do you think we want secret information leaking away down Tedder's ear in the small hours of the night? Using the letter, sir, did seem a very good idea. And wasn't. Why not? Well, maybe the fact that he had such a blazing affair made him an even better catch in her eyes. Well, we'll have to find out more about her. So when do I start? I said you're not to see her, Callum. What do you know about female psychology, across? 
Take the obvious and turn it upside down, sir. That's it. Oh, my God. Then get on with it and put an end to this affair. Before the wedding, if you don't mind. Well, I don't see how it can be done unless I work very late. Oh, uh, I understand, senorita, but uh, it's very important. Well, I was going out. Oh, no. Then I could not ask. But you didn't. I'm offering. Would you excuse me? Oh, please. But uh, you go on now, eh? Huh? It is uh, it's, uh, your time. <laughs> there doesn't seem to be any alternative, does there? No, no, it is a uh, free time, you understand? <laughs> yes. Hello, Ma? Darling, I'm sorry I can't make it for this evening. I know, darling, but I've got to finish the stuff for the conference. You see, it's being curtailed and everything has to be ready for tomorrow evening. I'm sorry, darling, there's masses. I'll ring you. Bye. Say, Marita, I am most grateful, really. It's my pleasure, Signor. Now, you just give me time for a very quick snack and I'll get straight on. A snack? What is a snack? A sandwich. I'll just have a sandwich. Sandwich? Sandwich? <laughs> with, with so much work to do? It's no, quite no, all right, no, 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 no. You're kind enough to work so late for me. Huh? Look, look. Already is uh, it's seven and a half. I take you to dinner. Senor, no, 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 no. I take you to dinner. Tell me where you want to go. Huh? Senor, no, 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 no. I am insisting. Tell me. Where do you want to go? The nearest is the Rococo. Rococo? Ah, it's the telephone number. Oh, I, I have to do it uh, for an outside line. Oh, of course. Yes. It's very nice. My fiancé discovered it. We will have a good meal. We drink French wine. We return and uh, you are refreshed. Huh? It's very kind of you. Oh, I am returning your kindness. Hello? Oh, please, please. Hello? Is uh, Rococo restaurant? Uh, my name is uh, Senor Andares. I wish a table for two, please. Uh, in um, 20 minutes. Thank you. So, now you work in comfort. Thank you. <laughs> oh, please, oh, one moment. Huh? Senorita, you will do me the honor. Mr. Tedder? I'm speaking from the Rococo restaurant, sir. I have a message to you from Miss Lampton. Uh, yes, sir. Your table reservation has been changed from 8 o'clock to 8.45, sir. Oh, I'm afraid I couldn't tell you. That's the only message I have, sir. Uh, good night. <laughs> so, <laughs> there I am. You understand. I, I, I am, I'm not in balance already. <laughs> One word is I'm standing on, the other is high in the air. <laughs> oh, I, I feel fool. <laughs> it should be quite a trick. So we need to be taken. <laughs> <laughs> How did you know what Terra's reaction would be? I didn't. It's in his file. Ugly scenes at parties. There was a nasty incident in a nightclub in 1968, that sort of thing. He might have attacked Amberis. Well, it wouldn't matter, sir, would it? And whatever he does, he's going to look pretty nasty. I don't want any trouble involving a diplomat, Callan. Would you like to do the job, sir? It's your problem. Then will you let me do it my own way? And what have you achieved so far? Two people want to get married. But now they don't trust each other anymore. That's what I've achieved so far, sir. I thought you'd be pleased. Sit down. What do you propose doing now? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. All we do is sit back and watch the bloody poison work. And if it doesn't? Well, doubtless you've got some other scheme up your sleeves. I don't want anything untoward to happen, Callan. Untoward? Isn't it a bit late to get squeamish? I'm simply ordering you not to do anything rash. Oh, don't worry, sir. There are other ways of killing people than with a bullet.
the book. Yes, I'm his fiance. All right, I'll turn back for the will you, will you please see if it is available? Then? Thank you. I hope I didn't disturb you. No. Only I know how irritating it can be being interrupted in the middle of a personal call. It wasn't a personal call. It should have been, but it wasn't. Mark Tedder, I'm still waiting. Look, I'll do it, but I have to wait for the chance. And when does that come? The information isn't easy to get just like that, you know. People have to be played along. You're in the position to do it? Not fully yet. Well, you'll have to move more quickly, won't you? I'll try. Do that, or you don't get your money. Well, that was from DI5. I suppose that's not enough for you. Oh, my God. You're not convinced? Listen, we're suspicious of him already. Right now, that could mean anything we want it to mean. The boat's still a bit of a journalist. Anyone else listening to that would think he was talking to some editor about an article he's writing. Yeah, it's possible. Well, why don't you just think about it for a minute, eh? I mean, you know, try it for size. Use your intelligence cross. After all, you know, you are with grade one now. You're with the big boys. You know why they brought me in, Mr. Callum? Because some of the big boys are getting too soft. Listen, mate. You spend every day, all day, with that girl. Now, suppose you tell me what you really think about her. I think our actions are as much for her good as they are for the department. Is that right? Here's a copy of a letter from the girl to Tedda after the Rococo incident. Now, our DI5 friends pick this thing up. But you see, they work on suspicion. We don't, mate. We work on fact. Listen to this. I wait for you to call. As I don't hear from you, the days get greyer. Please, Mark, I love you so much. If you leave me now, I don't know what I shall do. Please, please see me. Please, please, etc., etc., etc. We're doing all this for her good, well, are we? Tedder's probably already extracting information from her. If it can ever be proved, she'll be arrested for passing secrets. Sonny, don't teach your grandmother to suck eggs. Yeah. Grandmother. Bless you, love. Oh, I was about to make a phone call, Mr. Cross. Oh, that's all right. It won't disturb me. It's private. Personal. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Mark Tedder, please. Miss Lampton. Mark Tedder. Hello, Mark. You sound as though you don't want to talk to me. Look, did you get my letter? No, I didn't get any letter. Oh, look, this is no good. We, we can't talk about it over the phone. Please come and see me. Mark, this is such a silly misunderstanding. When? Tonight, please. Your flat? Yes, my flat. Darling, we can sort this out. Really, we can. Yes. Bye-bye, then. Yeah, mate. Who? Oh. Uh, Miss uh, Lambton living there? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is she in? No, no. Uh, you the caretaker, are you? Perhaps you wouldn't mind giving them to her then. Thanks, mate. There you go. I didn't know you cared, mate. No, I nearly got done that time. I nearly got nicked, you know that. Oh, dear. You had a fright, did you? A fright? Listen, I'm just coming out the boat's flat and the geezer turns up and gives me these things for her just as I'm coming out the door. Well, why the hell did you bring them here then? Well, I mean, I... 
I couldn't think what else to do with them. <laughs> There's a very good answer to that somewhere. Oh, charm! Don't you watch what you're doing now. Sit down! Lucky calm yourself down, mate. Love Mark. Yeah, it might be useful, I suppose. You find anything? No, nothing. I think she's a bit weird. She only seems to write to other birds and a dad. Well, that's fine. That knocks another good idea on the head. Yeah. Yeah, well, well in that case, uh, is that me finished in? Yeah. I'm sorry you had a fright. Fright? I nearly jumped out my skin. Well, that wouldn't do any harm, would it? Come on, walkies. No, uh, look, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but, but Mr. Cut, I, I, I wish I could have found something yeah. for you in, yeah. a, in a flat, well, you know. Maybe you have. I looked everywhere. Yeah. I took the place apart right. practically. Yes. I, I couldn't so find that. So no. long. If you put it like that, it was jealousy. I couldn't bear the thought of you with someone else. If it was true, I didn't want to know any more about it. Mark, you know I'm not like that. Beth, I don't know what to think. No. We don't seem to be making much of a success of this, do we? Well, it's supposed to be best to talk. Yes, I suppose it is. Mark, how did you find out Senor Andares was taking me to dinner? Phone call. Who on earth would... You didn't recognise the voice? He said he was a waiter at the Rococo. Well, then you believed him? Well, why shouldn't I? You just don't trust me. I've apologised. Stop behaving as though it's me who's in the wrong all the time. Well, isn't it? At least I don't carry around old love letters. Love letters? Oh, Mark, I didn't mean to say oh, that. Oh, come on, what letters? No, Mark, honestly... What letters? The ones I found from darling Jeanette. You found them? Where? Here. You must have dropped them. How could I? I don't carry them about with me. I'd forgotten the damn things even existed anymore. Then how did they get here? Just a minute. Mark, how did they get here? Just a minute. You find letters. You receive a photograph. I get a phone call. And I think a man's following this. Really, it's a little frightening. But who is it? Who's trying to get at us? And what the hell for? I've never known anyone who would do this sort of thing. And I have. Well, I don't know. I realise I haven't known you that long. I think the best thing I can do is go. <laughs> but if I do, we'll be doing exactly what this person is after. Well, it doesn't sound to me a very good reason for staying. Beth, I happen to love you. I'd never have dreamt it. Darling, I'm trying to sort this out. I'm sorry. I don't know who's after us, I don't know why. Jeanette and I finished two years ago. Of course I still see her occasionally, simply as a friend. So what? I no longer care for her. That's the truth. Oh, Mark. Oh, darling. Senor Andaris wanted his translations done. I wouldn't be unfaithful to you. Really. Still there? Uh, shacked up for the night, I shouldn't wonder. You want to bet? Oh, Mark, I'm so glad we were so wrong. So am I. Yes? You're looking for Miss Lampton? Yes. Beth Lampton. That's right. Ah. Well, I was asked to deliver these to you, especially tonight. Oh, thank you. Oh, Mark, how lovely. 
Thank you. Oh, just one moment. Thank you very much indeed. someone special? No. It's just a bit of nonsense. Oh, yes. Who sent them? Oh, no one you'd know. How intriguing. Oh, there's no point. I mean, you wouldn't know who... No one I'd know. Mark, I have no idea why he should send me flowers. I have! Until the time we spend another night together like the last one. Love, Rolf Anderes. Please, Mark. I've no... Mark, honestly, I've... To obtaining information, 50 p You've been sprinkling fibers around like confetti. For services rendered, sir. Uh, did you see yesterday's time, sir? Services by this fellow lonely? Well, he did quite a lot of the work, sir. Don't you think he's cost us enough already? Well, don't let's forget who put him inside in the first place. Taxes, taxes, expenses must be cut down, Callum, down! I think you're getting value for your money, sir. We did get the flowers for nothing, sir. Listen to this. The marriage formally announced between Elizabeth Lampton and Mark Tedder will not now take place. That's yesterday's paper, sir. You really ought to read the social column. I saw it. It's official now. You both did your job. Thank you, sir. Anyway, it's all just academic now. How do you mean? Miss Lampton was taken to St. Stephen's Hospital earlier this morning, suffering from an overdose of barbiturates. She died two hours ago. Charming. Bloody charming. Oh, don't Calum. you say anything. Do you mind? Just don't say now, anything. Calum. I'm as sorry as you are. The General's a widower and she was his only daughter. Why didn't you send a wreath? Yes, I intend to. As a matter of fact, I know the General quite well. We've been friends for some years. Well, God help your friends. Mm -hmm.